Hey nerds, in this video I'm going to go over how to build a show and hide section uh, based on a click, uh, in this case buttons. Uh, this was posted on Reddit in the Elementor Reddit uh, by Acrobatic Building 59 uh, They asked how to do it and they luckily linked a site so we can check out exactly what they're looking at. Uh, in this case they have two buttons and based on the buttons it's going to show different content down here uh, relating to what the button is uh, calling for. Um, we can easily do this uh, two ways. We could do jQuery, which is the way I'm going to show you how, or in this case, uh, you could also possibly do tabs. Um, jQuery, in my opinion, is a little bit more open, and you could do a little bit more with it without building into templates and all this other kind of stuff too much. Uh, so the code is relatively simple, and I just want to show you how all that works and help explain it for you. All this code is based off of uh, element how, as far as the basic structure of how it works. And uh, basically, I found this code as well uh, when I needed to use it for uh, one of our clients that we had to build a section for. Um, and what we want to do uh, when getting into this, I'm going to go over the setup on how this works. So the basic structure is going to be a section. I have a custom HTML widget up top here, uh, so you can do this even on uh, basic uh, Elementor as well. You don't have to have Pro, I believe. Uh, some of the elements you, you may just have to add separately versus all together. Uh, but in any which way, uh, I have just two standard Elementor buttons here. Um, they do have a link of the hashtag, so that way uh, they do look like you can click them. I'm gonna hop in here real quick from the future. Uh, the buttons, they have hashtags. Make sure they do not have any links in them at all. Um, if you leave hashtags in there, it will jump up to the top of the page and we don't want that. We want to just make sure that the buttons are just clickable as is. Um, so we will have to add a little bit of styling in there since it does not consider an A link anymore. Uh, so just style the uh, colors as needed. Um, the code that is going to make sure that it actually has a pointer when I hover over it, if it doesn't have an A link. Um, we need to come down here to style and just make sure that the button styles, the cursor is set to pointer. So that way on desktop, it looks like you can at least click on it. And with that set, I'm going to jump you back into the video again. And they keep the style of a button. Um, besides that, I have a spacer. And then I have two intersections here uh, for the two different contents that I want to show based on the clicks. Um, and they're styled uh, accordingly to match the button, uh, so that way we know what we're looking at. Um, and basically, that's the concept. We have uh, two buttons and we have two sections. So now let's go down into the code and break down uh, what's going on here. So jQuery, it may look confusing at first, but once we break it down, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for you uh, to help experiment with jQuery in the future because it is relatively simple. Uh, so for the two sections, because I have the two buttons and I have two sections here, uh, I have the code split out uh, specifically for each section. So between lines 1 and 12, uh, that script tag, uh, that's going to be for the first button, and 13 and 24, that's going to be for the second button. And it's going to be associated to each button by its own stuff, so it just has its own unique code. So on the first button, which is lines 1 through 12 again, uh, the first codes is basically just saying, hey, uh, once the page loads, we're going to add this jQuery. On line 4, this is where we start specifying what the button is based on the class and what the other classes are that we want it to do. So on line 4, we have click to show 0. And in this case, that matches our first button, click to show 0. Uh, in this case, with the button selected, I could go to advanced, and we see that we have the CSS class click to show zero. What this is going to do is on line five, so when this, aka that class, aka the button, once it's clicked, it will show on the end here, it says show, show click zero. And now show click zero is this entire intersection. So this intersection selected, I could go to advanced. And you can see I added the class show click zero. So back down at the code, show click zero, the button 
once we click on it, it will show that class section. Now what's going to happen is once we show that, we don't want two boxes to appear at the same time. So once we click on the click to show zero, we want to also hide the show click one box because we don't want that content to show because we specifically clicked to show show click zero content. So with this simple code down here, we can, again, once it's all in the same function, once we click, it will show that section, but it will also hide the other section, the show click one section. And in this case, uh, I'm not too uh, jQuery versed, uh, but in this case, I just followed again the element how, uh, how that works. And they have these two lines that both hide the section. Uh, so with that done, I'll go over the active class very shortly. Uh, with that done, so now every time you click on click to show zero, it will show that section and it will hide the other section no matter what. Now what we want to do is the exact opposite for the second button. So the click to show one, in this case, we want to on click to show one, we want to click it to show show click one, but at the same time hide the class show click zero. So with all of our sections and buttons, again, with our classes added, exactly how I have it listed here, now it should function properly. So what I could do is update this. And now we can come over here and it shows both of the objects as I click on each section. Now you do see I have an active style here. Again, I'm gonna go over that. And as you did see, once we first loaded it, we did see both intersections at the same time when we only need to see one as the active. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. The reason that I have both of them shown is that I need to be able to edit it. Uh, if it's not visible, I can't edit it on Elementor. What I did is add also in this code, a style between 25 and 32. This is going to always hide show click one, AKA the second section all the time. So when editing this, all I did is come back up here and I just erased the E so that way I can still edit it, AKA breaking the code. So now I added E back in and as, as you see, it shows properly. So let's update that and view that now. So now when we load in on the page, the show click one section will always be hidden on first page load. But even though it's hidden, once we click on click to show one, it will always show. And because of this, it will always show in that same section here. Now to go over the active state of these buttons, it's relatively simple if you understood everything so far. Once we go back to the site, we can see that I added down here the active and then the element or button uh, styling to make the background color red. In this case, I had to use important because without important, the first button uh, was not actually changing the color, even though the second one was. So to easily do this, all I did is add in that when you click on click to show zero, it will create this function, which in this function, it will also add the class active to click to show zero. But at the same time, just like we have to hide up here, the second button, the second button we're gonna hide and AKA remove the class active. And for the second button down here, we have the exact opposite. So when you click to show one, the button, it will add the class active and remove it for the first button. And all we have to do in this case is to determine which one is gonna be active, which in our case is the zero. Once we come over here, we can just add a space and type active. So in this case, we have the first section always active. It's always visible. And then once we start clicking everything, it will start showing the content as intended. So as we come back here, we see now that it's active red and we can click on the next and we can see that we can easily go back and forth. And of course you could add the styling as much as you want to show exactly everything how you want it to. The last thing that I wanted to go over real quick was back on this site, I kind of don't like how the site 
jumps as you click these things. Uh, I prefer the sections that just are the same. So just as a tip, uh, make sure that when you are editing these sections, I recommend finding the longest section. And once you find that longest section, make sure you come over here to the min height and you can add your min height as needed to make sure that the boxes do not jump around. Uh, because if they are opposite, uh, again, my opinion only, is that it just doesn't look as good once you start clicking and navigating the site. Uh, it may be useful if you do have a ton of content to show and hide, uh, but for the most part, um, I don't like that jump. So definitely find your longest one and then make sure that you adjust it as needed uh, for the height difference. Um, and of course, because this is responsive, make sure you do the same for your tablet and mobile as well uh, to make sure that everything looks and functions as intended. So hopefully this has helped you out and opened up your eyes on a whole set of new tools that you can use uh, to create different aspects and different designs and functions for your website. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.